Hi everyone, and welcome to this plant tutorial bite for oxygen not included. As always, make sure to check out the plant tutorial bite if you haven't already for an overview of the plant mechanics. This plant tutorial bite is all about arbor trees, which are arguably the most powerful plant in the game. Arbor trees are found in forest biomes, which is one of the three starting biome types with the pips that work with them. And they are grown from arbor acorns which are used to plant arbor trees and can be fed to Paku. Unlike the other plants, arbor trees grow in two stages. They have a central trunk that grows in a two-tile high space, taking a full growth cycle of either four and a half cycles domestic or 18 when wild to grow fully, which only happens once. After that, the tree will start growing branches in any of the seven spaces around this trunk, although only five branches can grow at one time. By intentionally blocking some tiles, for example with ladders, you can force a tree to grow branches where you want. Each of these branches will then repeatedly grow, and each growth cycle gives 300 kilograms of lumber per branch. With that in mind, here is the info for the tree, or really you could think of this as for the branches, as this is the part that keeps regrowing. To grow the tree and branches, any atmosphere can be used between 150 grams and 10 kilograms, and the livable temperature range is between 15 and 40 degrees Celsius, so similar to dupes. They also give a plus 15 decor at a two tile range. Arbor trees are very commonly grown wild because of their synergy with pips that can both make new arbor acorns and wild plant them for free resources. But growing arbor trees domestically needs 10 kilograms per cycle of dirt and 70 kilograms per cycle of polluted water, which is possible to do, and of course the branches will grow four times quicker in this case. Because of the polluted water needed, they are best grown in hydroponic tiles. So jumping back a second, the simplest way to get arbor acorns is to dig up arbor trees around the map. Also note that in the base game, many maps do not have forest biomes, as it is one of the two starting biomes. If you are on a base game map with a temperate biome start, for example the popular Terra Asteroid, then you will not find pips or arbor trees. Instead you will have to get a lucky print from the printing pod, or else get them from space by sending a rocket with a biological cargo bay to a living planet. For help with this, see the base game rocketry tutorial bite. But with one tree, you can make more acorns with a specific method. Arbor trees do not drop new seeds when harvested. Only pips can rustle a new arbor acorn from an arbor tree, if it has spawned one inside, but there is no way to know if this has spawned. Arbor trees have a 5% chance to spawn a new arbor acorn every time a new branch is grown, so to speed this up, we can force the tree to keep growing new branches by drowning them repeatedly. A setup like this can be used with a submerged tree to kill the branches quickly and automatically, then as long as there is a pip nearby, it will be able to rustle the tree as soon as a new acorn is made. The tree itself can't be submerged though, so you need to use three small layers of liquid. I also covered this in the pip critter tutorial bite, but I will repeat it here as it is very important. Making three layers with a tile gap in the middle is a little bit fiddly, and so I would recommend starting by putting tiles where the tree will go first. Then bottle empty a little bit of each of the three liquids in turn. Then you can have a dupe mop up two tiles along, as the mop command gets the liquid either side of the command too. Once this is ready, put in a critter drop off, or use the move command and get a pip inside. And finally, use a storage bin or the move command to drop off a single arbor acorn for the pip to plant. It's also a good idea at this point to put a ladder in the space above the trunk to stop branches growing there meaning they only appear on the sides to be drowned. Now what you might have noticed here is that the pip can't move because of the liquids. This means a wild pip is better, as it will stay and lay an egg even though it has nothing to eat. But pips can only walk through the liquids if the tile below the tree base is open too, and they have a tile to jump to. You do have to use four different liquids to make this liquid lock, and the idea is the same as I have just shown for three. A setup like this can be used to plant multiple arbor trees for acorn rustling, and you can use domestic pips in here. By setting up at least one tree like this, and ideally more, 
you can generate the armor trees needed to make big farms. So having looked at how to get arbor acorns and grow the trees, I really need to cover the most important thing, which is why to grow them. Arbor trees have two main uses, and the first is for ranching pips in a dirt farm. I covered this in detail in the pip critter tutorial bite too, but as pips eat arbor tree branches, they then excrete dirt. An 8 pip branch with 3 wild arbor trees will make 160 kilograms per cycle of free sustainable dirt. But their most powerful use is in making lumber. This has two uses and can either be burnt directly in a wood burner to make 300 watts of power and cum dioxide. Assuming you use wild arbor trees, you'll get 1,500 kilograms of lumber every 18 cycles. That's enough to power about 0.1 wood burners for an average power of 35 watts, and means you need 8.64 wild trees per burner. One wood burner gives 170 grams per second of carbon dioxide, which is enough to feed five slicksters, making an extra 85 grams per second of oil or petroleum, and an average output of 3,333 kilocalories of barbecue per cycle. And as wild trees are completely free to grow, this is a really good way to make a lot of useful free resources. Plus, this can be scaled up by planting more trees, and I'll look at that shortly. But the second use for lumber is even more powerful. By feeding lumber into ethanol distillers to make ethanol, and then ethanol into a petroleum generator, we can get even more resources out. You'll need around 7 wild trees per ethanol distiller, so each tree can make 70 grams per second of ethanol. This also produces 46 grams per second, or 28 kilograms per cycle, of polluted dirt, and 23 grams per second of carbon dioxide, but consumes 33 watts of power. Taking the ethanol and burning it in the petroleum generator will then make 70 watts of power, so this is power positive by 37 watts. And from the petroleum generator, you get 26 grams per second of polluted water and 17 grams per second of carbon dioxide. The polluted water can be used as it is, or be sieved or boiled into normal water. This water can then be used in an electrolyzer to make 25 grams per second of oxygen, or enough for a quarter of a tube. The combined carbon dioxide output can be fed to 1.2 slicksters, making 20 grams per second of oil or petroleum, and about 800 kilocalories per cycle of barbecue. The polluted dirt is also interesting here, and could be converted into dirt with a compost. But this is the only way to make sustainable large amounts of polluted dirt, which is poker shell food. Because of this, we can now sustainably ranch poker shells too, and there are three choices of morph that you can ranch. Whichever you choose, one wild arbor tree can feed 0.4 poker shells. If using poker shells, you'll get poker shell malts that give 1 kilogram per cycle of lime. If using sani shells, you'll get about 270 kilocalories per cycle of raw shellfish, or about 430 kilocalories per cycle of cooked seafood. And perhaps most interestingly, if you use ochre shells, you'll get 35 kilograms per cycle, or 60 grams per second, of lumber. This is 42% of the lumber we used to make the polluted dirt. So by feeding this lumber back in as well, we get more of everything from the whole cycle. With this in mind, I'll add the outputs in this case in brackets. And for a guide to ranching poker shells, see the poker shell critter tutorial bite. Hopefully you can now see why this is such a powerful cycle that makes very useful outputs for free. Although one wild tree doesn't make that much, this can be scaled up to 10, 50 or 100 trees, or even more if you have the space and patience. That's why the arbor tree is so powerful, and in many ways comparable to the output of a petroleum boiler, but without being limited by oil wells or volcanoes. You literally only need to start with one pip and one arbor acorn, to make unlimited sustainable power, food and water. Everything a colony needs to survive. Note that domestic arbor trees are not sustainable from the polluted water made in this cycle, but you do get 90% back, so with a little extra input and some renewable dirt, it is possible to use a quarter of the trees and not have to wild plant them. So that's great in theory, and let's look at the practical side. Firstly, we're going to need a lot of arbor acorns, so make sure to set up one tree or more just making acorns. 
Then these can be planted domestically or in a wild farm. If doing wild farming, then you'll need more plants. And for a guide to wild farming and pit planting, see the dedicated tutorial bite. Now we could simply let the branches fall off by themselves once grown, but that takes four cycles, so we'll reduce the lumber output. Alternatively, simply let the dupes harvest them manually, but this will take quite a bit of labour. Either of these options are viable, and if doing this we just need to auto-sweep, or manually supply the lumber to the ethanol distillers. But the community has also come up with a design that uses waterfalls to harvest the branches. This is similar to what we did to get more arbor acorns, but here we control the waterfall to only happen every 18 cycles, when the branches are ready to harvest. Credit to Her515 who shared this design, which I'm going to explain. There are three main parts to cover, which are how to make waterfalls, the 18 cycle counter, and the automation. As you can see, there are wild planted arbor trees with a ladder above the trunk, and auto sweepers and loaders at the bottom to collect the lumber. In order to build this, you need to wild pip plant the arbor trees correctly. So starting with the waterfalls, these are a bit tricky to make. Normally, if you use a liquid vent, the liquid will come out as drops until it hits a surface. To make waterfalls here, the vents fall directly onto an airflow tile, and then a mechanised airlock that opens. By opening the airlock when there is already liquid on it, the waterfall can continue. So each row of trees below has hydro sensors that open the door when it detects liquid. The flow of liquid is controlled by the liquid valves at the top, set to 400 grams per second, and is pumped up from the bottom in a closed loop. Now, to time the whole cycle, we need to count to a little beyond 18 cycles. It would be great to simply use a timer sensor, but this only goes up to 10 cycles, so this design uses a liquid counter, which is quite clever. By pumping water through a liquid valve, we can then count the amount of water collected above. Because we know the flow rate, which we set here to 36 grams per second, we can pick the correct amount on the hydro sensor to take a bit over 18 cycles, which in this case is 197 kilograms. Once this time has passed, the sensor opens the door to reset the clock and triggers the waterfall automation that we'll look at next. It is also possible to do this purely with automation alone, but this is quite an elegant solution and very precise. Now, once the liquid clock sends a green signal, the automation starts to make the waterfalls. The first thing we need to do, though, is use a buffer gate set to 107 seconds to keep the signal green for long enough to harvest the branches, as the water clock will very quickly reset as soon as its door opens. Holding this green signal, half the liquid vents and top doors are opened to start the waterfall. As the water hits the next level, the hydro sensors open the doors, keeping the waterfalls flowing. The reason this is only half the trees is because it's more difficult to make two waterfalls next to each other. So we do half the trees first, and then the other half afterwards. In fact, this design is actually an improvement over an older design that used an extra tile gap between the trees to avoid this problem, meaning you could harvest them all at once, but it takes up extra space. Then once the first half is harvested, the second half is harvested. To make the delay, Two filter and two buffer gates are cleverly used. This goes filter buffer filter buffer, and the times are 106 seconds, 17 seconds, 16 seconds, and 107 seconds, respectively. The automation wire then makes its way back to every other tree. With this working successfully, the lumber drops to the bottom and is picked up by the auto sweeper to be used in the base. Fully automated. And here's a quick one take reference for you to build this design yourself. The lumber is then brought in on the conveyor rails and can be fed to the ethanol distillers. I've also included these in an industrial brick, as they make carbon dioxide directly too. This is easy to do with solid shipping, which I covered in its own tutorial bite. We simply put conveyor receptacles next to every three distillers and let the auto sweepers feed them. Then these can also collect the polluted dirt to be shipped to poker shell ranches. The ethanol is then piped to petroleum generators, and my recommendation here is to use a hot industrial brick with molten slicksters. 
This boils the polluted water and deals with the large amounts of carbon dioxide made. And for a complete guide to this, then see the industrial bricks tutorial bite. And that's everything I have to cover about arbor trees in oxygen not included. I hope this helps with farming these very powerful plants, and thanks for watching.